Welcome back, everybody, to the Houston Texans Madden 21 Rebuild franchise. It's time for another offseason as we are getting on to the fifth year here in this franchise rebuild. It's been a really fun series to this point, and it's proven to be a challenge similar to the one that I think I did a few years ago with the Cleveland Browns, where I found the right quarterback for us early in that series, but getting the team to actually be successful was really difficult. And that's where we're at here with Houston. We had Deshaun Watson at like 89 overall, first episode of the series. And still, we've just been going eight and eight every year. So we have some struggles. And we have, I think, a few players that are going to help get us to that next level. But will it happen this year? Is the wait going to continue? We're going to find out. But I've really enjoyed the series so far. I'm enjoying the games. I know there's another update coming out soon. And I uh, see that it's going to impact like trade logic and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. But I also took some time here before recording to take a look at XP sliders and how the league is doing overall and how player progression is going. So I want to take a few minutes to talk about that. The Vikings had a major success story from last year, and it was with number one overall pick Cam Cobb. And he went from an 80 overall rookie with superstar dev to an 88. Ignore the morale boost. Eight points up as a rookie with 12 and a half sacks and rookie of the year. So there's a lot of XP when you consider he played all those snaps, got all those stats, and won that award. I am looking at a lot of XP sliders and how they handle the development for rookies because I think what's important here in franchise is to have that cycle of new players who become stars and replace older players and I feel like there's been obviously some inefficiencies in the way franchise is set up. I think that in a lot of cases players don't regress fast enough and I think that the uh, dev trait regression is something that should be in the game I don't know if it's handled correctly for us to get what we need from it is the problem because what tends to happen here in these series keep in mind I just put that on before I started recording so it's been off and basically what you have in these series is the best players are just the players you started out with pretty much highest rated player in the game that was drafted in this series is Cam Cobb, who just won Rookie of the Year. So, nobody yet that's been drafted in the series is a 90 overall. The highest is 88. And I think it's really important to have dev trait regression. And I think that I just, the way I prefer everything set up, I think that the X Factor development should be extremely exclusive. I'm talking like 10 players. 10, 15 maybe. I think like the Aaron Donalds of the world should have X Factor, but I just don't think that it's even good for the series to have 54. And guess what? We don't have 54 because regression's been off. I counted. We have in this series 72 players who have X Factor. And at Superstar, we have 134. And no one's losing any development. So I went through this entire menu here to count everybody, all the X Factors and all the Superstar players. So my thought is to put the regression on. I have some concerns about it, like who it chooses to regress. Like are offensive linemen going to be regressing because they don't get the flashy stats that a running back would? So, I don't know what the perfect setup is. I'm just trying to get this to as close as I like as possible. So, what I'm thinking is we turn regression on. I literally only want like 20 even. Okay, 25 is the lowest I can go. I still think 10 to 15. If you want to consider like the tier of player that like Aaron Donald's in. The elite of the elite. Patrick Mahomes. DeAndre Hopkins those guys I think the tier that they're in is a lot smaller than 54 players I actually think that X Factor should be extremely exclusive to like generational Hall of Fame talents and Superstar should be the one that covers most of the superstars in the league players that are very good 
but at the end of the day, it's just not good for franchise to have a ton of players at X Factor because they'll become 99s and just stay there until they retire or in the 90s until they retire. And it messes with their regression because the higher your development, the less you're going to regress on a yearly basis. So I think like if you only have a handful of players in that category, that's cool. But I think that superstars should probably have uh, quite a few. And I think I want to keep star at 500 because I want players to be developing and uh, normal development is uh, kind of an issue. Players develop so slow, like Amari Jones is up two points. And looking at the way receiver has been handled in this series, I felt like receiver was actually getting a little bit too much experience. I didn't like cut it significantly. None of this is going to matter right now. It'll matter once I do more simulating and get to the end of the next season. So you can leave some feedback below on how those things are handled. And I have readjusted the XP sliders now after looking at rookies from the last class and comparing their overall as they were drafted to their overall now factoring in their development awards their downs played and their cumulative stats so it's still a process i just moved it in the direction i felt they needed to go but that's where i'm at now and i'm ready for an off season to begin Oh, last thing too, because those inflated XP sliders were a little bit too high, I did have to re-rate a few positions a little bit. There were like 7.99 overall running backs, so I smoothed that out a little bit. Still a lot of good ones. Receiver 2, those two are the main ones that were too high. Offensive line can stay high. As long as we have a few players in the 90s, then I'm pretty happy with it, so those will remain some of the highest. And defense, I didn't think was as bad, but I did tweak those slightly. I don't think I messed with safety, though. I liked where safety was at. So here's all the 99 overall players. There's a lot of players in this upper tier. And if they all have, like, X Factor, they're just not going to regress very much. And they'll just keep rookies from ever starting. Like, I checked out the top 10 players in this last draft, and so many of them were like number four receivers and they were like good first round picks but they just couldn't get high enough on the depth chart to play so anyway who wants to do an off season we already went through retirements nobody retired for the houston texans so now we got to worry about who we're going to re-sign and how we're going to handle the future so we have 124 million dollars in cap space you can do a lot with that Ultimately, we do have a lot of free agents this year, and I always like to know who is going to be due new deals in the coming year, especially if they're big deals. So we're looking at Gordon Norwood, Max Ridley, Zach Cunningham, Andrew McCoy, Jeremiah Bradham, Kerry Borden. Next year looks pretty busy, but I don't think it's going to be too much of a big deal, especially because most of these players aren't that highly rated. The highly rated free agents are actually right now Brandon Cooks Laramie Tunsil and Terrell Edmonds and I do want to sign Laramie Tunsil 45 million dollars three years I let uh, older players usually make it to this last stage so their demands can adjust so Tunsil star dev this is a three-year contract so it's not a four or a five there'll be some regression in there but I am cool making this deal. I just don't like moving on from offensive linemen. I like signing them for just like 10 years straight. The last thing I want to do in an offseason is target linemen all the time. But, oh no. I would like to play for a new team next year. Please reconsider. Oh no. Because my whole plan here was I was going to tag Brandon Cooks even though it's going to be like $20 million. Because then I can just say, we have plenty of cap space, it fits, doesn't matter. I mean, use all your cap space, who cares if it's on one-year deals. So now, I can't use it on Tunsil if I want to use it on Cooks. What do we do? We sign Kalik Hudson. We make the easy decisions first, that's my off-season style. 28 over four seven mil a year he's only a 77 he's going to continue getting better he stuffed the stat sheet last year i loved uh what i saw from hudson and i think he's going to be a very key player going forward speaking of linebacker 
I would like to release Zach Cunningham. This will free up over $10 million in cap space. I don't think he's in our future plans. And I don't think anybody would be willing to take on that contract. When it comes to Madden, the way I like to play the game now, obviously not 100% of the time I do this, but I don't just like to play within the constraints the game gives me because you can get away with trades that you shouldn't be able to do. And I like making moves that make sense. It takes away from my experience if I'm just trading away players on bad contracts who are low rated. I mean, that's why, like in my Broncos franchise, right away I'm like, I'm not trading Joe Flacco. Who wants that contract? Nobody does. So, I try to make sure when I make a trade that it works out for both teams and it makes sense. So I'm not going to make trades like sending veterans on expiring deals to some 2-5 and five team at the deadline just so I can gain a second round pick. I like to make moves that make sense. And uh, in re-signing too, I've been doing that a lot in my Broncos franchise. I'm hoping that just by figuring out XP sliders that the contract demands are a bit more realistic. They've gotten a lot better. They used to be like really easy in like the Madden 12 days. So. I like a linebacker situation. I think Bernardrick McKinney, $3 million, even if I don't start him, and I might not because Joe Jackson and Khalid Hudson are the linebackers I'm building around, but come on, I got $120 million in space. Oh, man. So, we're losing on some of these. Mims will let test. I think we have other receivers to start developing. Roger Saffold will let him go. And, oh yeah, Jonathan Edison. I forgot about him. He does have some pretty solid ratings. He's more of a run stopper than a cover linebacker. Can probably make that work. I viewed Edison as more of uh, the backup to Zach Cunningham. He just never had the coverage upside, but can still be good on special teams and as a run stopper. Jordan Aikens will let test. We'll let Josh Rivera test. Morgan Moses. And I'll have to check the roster quick for some of these other players. There's just so many this year. Alright, Rashawn Rhodes is back on a one-year deal. Trevor Underwood, I would like a two-year deal here. And I usually, if a player is lower rated, I don't go like, Hey, want a five-year deal at a low salary? Literally nobody signs those deals in real life. Enrique Raymond is coming back. Isaiah Coulter, we will probably let test. Same with Jonathan Grenard and Gino Stone, Linval Joseph. Brian Anger, I'll probably look for a new punter. He's probably going to retire sometime soon. And Kaimi Fairbairn, that accuracy is a little bit low. I think I'm looking for a new kicker this year. Charles Omenahu, Ross Blacklock, solid uh, contributors. I will wait to see what free agency has. And I might be able to do better than these contracts. We'll see. Not that I need to save a ton of money here in cap space or anything. Terrell Edmonds did get that late season dev boost. And it would be nice to not have to worry about safety. I have enough holes on the roster right now. So I'm cool with this offer. 27 over 4? Okay, deal done here with Terrell Edmonds and then Brandon Cooks. Do I just sign him to this deal? Because I want Cooks on the team. I really like him and it helps to have a veteran when you're developing so many younger players. So I'm just going to try to sign him. There we go. So I thought the franchise tag might work for Cooks. It's a lot here for Tunsil. And I'm giving him the $21.7 million because I just want left tackle fixed. We still have a lot of cap space, so I can handle doing those kinds of moves. We're still left with $77 million in free agency, and we have a 47-man roster. So a fair amount of those are going to be practice squad players. We are going to have a lot of uh, things to do, I think, when it comes to free agency. So quarterback, I don't think we have to worry about. Running back is fine. Receiver, there's already so many players here. We added Jermaine Candidate. We have Amari Jones. So we're going to keep developing these players. We have two tight ends. We could use more depth. We only have like seven linemen right now. So 
definitely finding replacements is going to be key. We need a new tackle and a guard. Imagine not having Laramie Tunsil and having to fill that spot as well. So, a couple offensive linemen. We need some defensive linemen as well. Carr and Borden are starting. I could prioritize another run stopper like Linval Joseph. We signed him a year ago. We have two linebackers here. Hudson, I should just move to inside linebacker. That's the role he's playing. All right, so it's Hudson, Jackson, Edison. Definitely some depth along the edge. I like our corner situation. Let's see if we have any high-rated free agents this year. James Robinson. Hey, high 80s. I'll take it. This is better than most I end up seeing. David DeCastro. We need guard. One-year solution there could be the right call for us. A lot of teams interested here in Jordan Love. He has higher dev than Sam Darnold, so... Three teams, no, four teams are apparently interested. Jalen Hurts is also available. I know quarterback is not a need, but Hurts would be a great backup to Watson. The problem here is that quarterbacks don't take tiny contracts until the preseason, so if I offer, like, you know, a five or six million dollar deal, something more typical for a backup quarterback, it's not getting taken but we are still giving him the $6 million offer. At wide receiver, there could be some interesting players here. Hey, Julio Jones. Okay. I'll consider something at wide receiver, but I do want to prioritize developing who we have. Mike McGlinchey's available, and that's potentially a multi-year fix. Two years. What about a three-year contract? Just try to really get the points onto this deal. 82 overall. Pass blocking isn't phenomenal, but the run blocking is. I like this offer. 91 points in sixth place? Okay, this is getting difficult. What do I have to go up to here? I mean, at 82 overall, $10 million a year seems like the low end for uh, offensive linemen these days. We can also try to give a deal here to David DeCastro. 13.7 puts us in first place. Still $50 million to spend. I mean, and this is why it's like that. Here are the top contracts now on the team. A lot of them are gone. It's Watson. It's Cooks. We just got him on that deal. And these ones are relatively new. So all the bad contracts of old are pretty much gone. I think they all are. And also, we only have a handful of players in the mid-80s or higher. So there are very few players getting big contracts, period. James Bradbury is available. At the end of the day, it's not the best idea to just keep signing like 31-year-old veterans on one-year deals. You do want to get younger players playing time, especially where you have promising young talent. And I think we have that at corner. I like the two corners I've drafted here in series. Oh, whoa. Isaiah Simmons. Hello there. Isaiah Simmons, 93 speed, 77 zone coverage. I already signed Terrell Edmonds. That's a move I may have to consider. Isaiah Simmons. I'm going to give a one-year deal offer to uh, Terrell Lewis. I'll have to make it larger as we try to add some edge depth. I also think someone like Tim Settle would be a great addition. He is still 27, so he's not going to be heavily regressing. Only has normal dev, but... Just to have a solid run stopper in the middle, I would like that a lot. And I'll lower this contract a little bit. But this is where things get interesting. Isaiah Simmons. We could play him at linebacker, play him at safety, play him at nickel. There's a role for Isaiah Simmons on every defense. Five-year deal. I say we go for it. 53.6 over five years. 97 points. 
This could be an incredible free agent period for the Houston Texans. Looking at the kickers, pretty much everybody has mid-70s accuracy or low 80s. So 81 might be about the best you can do here. 82 for Jason Myers. I will give an offer to Myers. Alright, this could be really, really good for our team this year. We just gave out so many offers, I can't even remember them all. Who do we have now? Come on, we gotta have some new players. No, we're rejected by Mike McGlinchey, but accepted by Jason Myers. Rejected by Isaiah Simmons and David DeCastro. We add Terrell Lewis and Tim Settle. So the three highly rated free agents we were targeting declined us. All of them. All right, let's see where they ended up going and for how much. Isaiah Simmons to the Browns. I offered like $7 million more. To Castro, I was at least a million dollars over that. McGlinchey, I was at least $2 million over that. Oh no. Nobody wants to go to the Texans. We're definitely not getting Jalen Hurts now either. So, Terrell Lewis, Tim Settle, Jason Myers. We address some needs. New plan. We target other highly rated free agents. Julio Jones. Could we bring in Julio for one year? It would impact the development of some players, but they could still have roles. $13 million? For O-line now, Lakin Tomlinson is somebody to consider. Damian Lewis is probably a better option. He's only 27 years old. But now that we're past stage one, we should take a deeper look at this draft class. We have no fifth round pick this year, but two fours. We pick 17th in the draft. So players in this range are players we can consider with our first round pick. I'm not really sure how I want to go about the first round, but let's just go position by position that we uh, are concerned with. Yeah, I scout the running backs. You never know if you could use a running back, like James Golden here, early first round talent. Amazing three cone and 20 yard shuttle. Again, there are solid receivers. Every class seems to give a lot of good receiving talent to the league. Although, I think the drop-off is pretty steep, judging by the red diamonds here. Sixth round talents and sevens. So, I don't know. Jamal Page is still interesting. Like, this isn't really that overrated. Late third projected, early fourth talent. Right now, we do have some openings along the O-line. So, do you think that some of those could be solved in the draft? There are some pretty solid left guards, and I think that there's a good chance that multiple are available at our first round pick. Some good centers as well that could be moved to guard. For the tackle class, it doesn't seem to be as strong, but there are still some decent options. And early second round talent is still starting caliber, I think. Potentially great value here, Niles McDuffie from Iowa. Third highest bench press in the class with a solid three cone and 20 yard shuttle, mid two talent, another potential run stopper we can develop. I think it would still be a good idea to offer a contract to Damian Lewis. We'll go with a one year deal. You never know if I draft a rookie and I wanna play him instead. So a smaller contract is better for that situation. And then, I think that I'd like to bring back Morgan Moses. Sometimes I just like to sign somebody that's already played for us. I have an idea of how to expect them to play. So, we'll bring back Moses as well if he signs that. And maybe a third tight end like Adam Troutman wouldn't be bad. These ratings are solid. Definitely more number two tight end caliber. So, let's put out a two-year offer. We are probably going to have a lot of cap space going into this year. So let's see if we get any signings now. 
Julio Jones, what do you say? You coming to Houston? Adam Troutman is. And so is Julio Jones. We also got Damian Lewis. Let's go. So we didn't upgrade our offensive line with the highest rated players, but now Julio Jones, maybe the last year of his career. We again have two highly rated wide receivers. This should be fun. Already wearing number 11 as well. Julio Jones, Brandon Cooks, and then a combination of Jermaine Candidate and Amari Jones. And I forgot to show you this at the beginning of the season, the beginning of the episode. So remember when I showed that he won Rookie of the Year? We were pretty happy about that, right? Again, we're going to check it. AFC Offensive Rookie of the Year, Amari Jones. Dom Ross ended up getting the award and the experience and the legacy. The second place player got the award. Again, these were Jones numbers, solid, definitely decent, and he was supposed to win the award. Let's go check out Dom Ross. He played a lot less on offense, only had three yards a carry, five touchdowns there, caught 33 passes and returned kicks. He ended up getting Rookie of the Year. I don't know. So yeah, that's strange. I don't think I've ever seen the second place player take the award before, but it happened here. So Amari Jones should have had some more development out of that. On to the next stage now, and Morgan Moses accepts the contract. So I think we're prepared to go into the draft now. We were able to make a couple of moves. We have some linemen that can start if we don't find replacements. We still have McCoy at one guard spot, then Damian Lewis will play probably left guard. Morgan Moses at right tackle depending on the draft. Tight end has three solid players, I believe. Still want to see more from Calvin Paulson. And then we add Julio Jones, a surprise addition. Probably don't make that move if we get like McGlinchey and Isaiah Simmons, but it didn't work out that way. We haven't done much for the defense. Tim Settle joined and we basically kept Terrell Edmonds. Otherwise, I'm prepared to play Hudson, Jackson, and go from there. Seems like this defense could still use another player, though. All right, everybody, let's begin the 2024 NFL Draft and the Broncos pick number one. I'm very interested in where these quarterbacks end up going. I have no idea how good they are, but three out of the four players on the available board, three out of the top four are quarterbacks. There are a lot of players, I think, that will be in play for us at 17. And I'm kind of thinking that another defensive player does make sense. Although, I guess we'll just have to see how the board falls. If there's any early first round talents available. I don't think this is a trade up draft for me. Alright, so the Denver Broncos pick first and go with a quarterback. Greg Connor from Michigan. 72 overall. What I thought was interesting too about quarterback in our league is that there are you know a fair amount of 90 overalls and above and it looks like okay maybe quarterbacks getting a lot more xp than they should but the drop off goes all the way to 84. justin herbert is rated the i think 10th yeah 10th best quarterback how do you have that much of a gap there so a lot of starters are actually in the 70s right now despite the best quarterbacks in the league being high 90s. So that's just an interesting situation. I think that maybe there just needs to be some more developmental quarterbacks drafted and uh, developed. So there's one. Steven Womack taken number two by the Carolina Panthers. Ramon Ross going three at tackle. Marquis Vaughn is the next pick, also at tackle. Walt Wilbon. DeAndre Bradley to the Giants, Ben Hayes to Philadelphia, Lance Fisher, 75 overall corner, Tremaine Huff going to Indy, James Cummings, Clayton Kershaw, 
All right. So, I'll have to check if he's left-handed. And Jaleel Moody is the very next pick. The quarterbacks actually get taken very early in this draft. That is really cool to see. Keelan Simmons, 76 overall corner. As we close in on our selection, Greg Flynn, Kalen Huntington, a couple options taken. And now we are on the clock at 17, and here are the options. First thing here, who has early first round talent? Stephon Ferris does. Another edge rusher could be added here today. Larry Hayden, another edge rusher. There's Chris Cosby, Taven Whitmore. Early first round receiver, Devin Macklin. I don't think that's going to be the pick. We have a lot of receivers to develop. So it appears, ooh, another receiver here with early first talent. Edge rusher certainly makes the most sense as Max Ridley is entering a contract year. He's still in his mid seventies for overall. So I think we're looking at Ferris or Hayden. Top threes are both solid, but Hayden has B awareness, which I find very interesting. 22 years old, good 40 time, and uh, solid three cone and shuttle, 24 reps on the bench. Ferris, 24 reps, and better three cone and 20 yard shuttle, also 22, block shed plus finesse moves. Hayden has finesse moves plus awareness. So that is about as close as it gets for two players at the same position and trying to figure out who to take. They're both going to be speed rushers. Same archetype within two inches of height, two pounds of weight. All right, what do we do? For what it's worth, Ferris is higher rated on the big board. I think I'm taking Stefan Ferris. The combine edge is just a little bit better. I don't think you can go wrong with either player. Ferris has hidden development. Let's go. I haven't had much luck drafting hidden dev in this series. He's third in true talent. 80 finesse, 86 speed, 76 block shed, 90 acceleration. Here we go. This could be fun. Very interested in where Hayden goes. It's not the very next pick. Wow, a lot of good corners in this class. And Larry Hayden ends up going to Tennessee 76 overall. So now we pick round two, pick 17. A lot of good receivers going off the board. Calvin Johnson to the Ravens. Could not make it to Detroit, unfortunately. They go with Luke Meltzer from Ole Miss. And the champion, Cincinnati goes David Ramos, linebacker, Alabama. Clay Jones, a new tackle to protect the new quarterback in Denver. Emilio Guerrero, a lot of great receivers. Devin Macklin. Theo Morant, James Matthews, Eric Bullard. We're already almost on the clock again. And now I think that offensive line is probably going to end up making the most sense. Still a first round talent at center. That might be the best option for us. Robert Bullard. Combine was decent. Pass block power, pass blocking, and run block power. So a first round caliber offensive lineman. Anything else to consider? Another pass rusher, probably not gonna happen. Yeah, I think this is kind of an easy choice here. Let's continue to add talent to our offensive line. Robert Bullard, hidden development. Let's go. Two for two. Bullard doesn't have the best strength, but he does have solid pass block power, pass blocking overall. I always wonder with strength at 85 if that is enough but there are at least some other ratings that I like a lot. Closing in on our third pick, I think now we can kind of do whatever we want. We address the couple areas of concern on the roster, and we still have 22 players on the draft board. There are some second round talents available. 
a few options, and James Golden at running back if we feel like that could give us a boost. We have Tony Pollard, we have Jeremiah Bradham. Golden could end up replacing Pollard potentially, especially if he has hidden development as well. So an intriguing running back, or we could take Niles McDuffie, probably even in the fourth round. Yeah, that seems like the most interesting pick we can make right here. James Golden's the pick. Normal development, but second in true talent. Okay, number two. Golden has 90 speed, 93 change of direction, 85 juke. These ratings are pretty nice. Again, another running back, though, with low catching. Was hoping that would be a little bit higher, but there's plenty of talent here with Golden. On to the fourth round where we have two selections to make. And we're on the clock. These picks are pretty close together as well. Right now, my favorite player on the board would have to be Niles McDuffie. We have to take him here in the fourth round. And I'm not going to wait for our next pick. McDuffie is the pick now, 71 overall, normal development, a run stopper from Iowa with 94 strength. There's a chance we just play him over Tim Settle because he has some solid skills already. Alright, I think we're having a pretty solid draft to this point and still 70 overall corners are being taken. We have drafted a running back, an offensive lineman, a defensive tackle, and a linebacker, pass rusher. So secondary hasn't been addressed. We could look to do that now. Timmy Brackett ran a 4.75. That seems like very, very low speed. Cameron Clifford a 4.59. Vince Leno, 455. He has zone coverage, hit power, pursuit. He's a zone archetype. Clifford is a run support safety with good play recognition. Six foot four as well. He's 21, Leno 22. I'm giving the slight edge in this one to Clifford. He's the pick, 67 overall, and they'll call this one a reach. But, ooh, 84 speed, I thought it would be a little bit more. So what's that 475 going to be? 80 hit power, 85 acceleration, 71 tackle. Chance Gerard could be an option. Receiver isn't exactly a need. It's one of the deeper parts, I think, in terms of just having talent to uh, work on developing for the future. He is the best player available. Let's add him. Can't have enough good receiver options. Deep threat from Ohio State with 89 speed. I'm surprised that he is a deep threat archetype with these ratings. The other route runnings are better. His speed isn't dominant. It is pretty tight. I think you develop him as a slot receiver. Definitely. And I think that you could end up, you know, maybe getting a player similar to like Randall Cobb in a couple of years. That's the hope. All right, so our last pick of the day now in the seventh round. We haven't had to really make too many tough decisions here in the draft. I'm taking the BPA at punter, John Mooney from Louisville. 67 overall, 84 power, 69 accuracy. That's kind of low. May have to sign somebody else to play punter. We'll see. But that is it for the draft. I thought we did a pretty good job. We got some hidden dev players now. And I feel like we were able to do the best we could with these selections. Four players in the 70s. We add a running back at 78 overall. I mean, that's a high overall for day one. If he were to get some playing time, I mean, he'd be in the 80s in no time. I think Ferris could potentially start on day one. Robert Bullard as well, maybe at guard. I was hoping to draft a tackle, but there were just so many more interior options. 
So overall, I liked our draft. There was another option we could have gone with in the first round. Larry Hayden at defensive end. He had normal development. So we ended up getting a hidden development pass rusher. So we got lucky there. I want to see these quarterbacks though. Greg Connor went to the Broncos, number one overall. And he's got better downfield accuracy than short, although it's all close. Decent mobility. I wonder if he has a path to starting early. I also wanted to see quarterback Clayton Kershaw. Texas Tech Scrambler, 92 throw power, really good speed, and accuracies that aren't bad on day one. I'm just curious if he's left-handed. Clayton Kershaw, new NFL quarterback, now he's left-handed. Jalil Moody was taken with the very next pick. He also had normal development, 91 throw power, also some mobility and lower medium accuracy so short and deep are better that's an interesting combination so three normal dev quarterbacks drafted hopefully they get a chance to play unfortunately none had hidden and i think our league really needs some hidden dev quarterbacks to be drafted but just the way madden 21 is i mean we're still dealing with slot receivers getting all the yards so there's plenty of things that i wish were fixed but i think we'll continue having fun regardless in this series all right, it seems like the offseason was uh, taking a lot of time to start out, and then the draft was just so quick. That's not normal for these offseasons. But I like the roster that we have. I wish we could have made a few more moves, but signing free agents is difficult now in this series. We did bring in Julio Jones, so the offense could be really interesting. And I have to figure out, you know, like, Tony Pollard hasn't been great in his time here with us so maybe we see if another team is interested and play our new rookie running back you have to find that blend of playing veterans and younger players and golden already is 78 overall bradham's at 79 sure he's almost at 80 but he spent three years getting there so that could be the new tandem right there i don't think golden's going to be as explosive as pollard but Still think with his ratings, he'll have a very bright future. At receiver, plenty of players to keep developing. Obviously, Amari Jones and Jermaine Candidates are going to be the priorities there. But even lower on the depth chart, there are some intriguing players. For the defense now, we have another edge rush option here. We have Stefan Ferris, hidden development. And I want to make sure he sees the field. I could have been more aggressive when it comes to corner, but that's the spot where I'm like, all right, I believe in who we have. I want to play Jeremiah Brown. I especially want to play Isaiah Fletcher. I thought he was really solid last year, and the more we watch the games, the more he seems to stand out, and somebody's got to be ready to take over for Bradley Roby. I don't know how many more years he's going to play, especially at the level that we've seen throughout the series. So. What do you think about this team now? Does the defense have too many holes? What do you think about the offense going into this coming season? Can this team finally do better than 8-8? Eight eight? I'd like to add an undrafted quarterback, Terrell Curry. I love having developmental quarterbacks on the team, and I think he is the most intriguing this year. I'd also like to at least have a running back on the practice squad that can develop as a receiving back. So Curtis Bush, 68 catching, 70 route running, 88 change of direction, we'll sign him. We're also going to sign an edge rusher, Jarek Duvall from Oklahoma State. We'll bring in Marcus Hall at corner, better zone coverage than man, and 72 press on day one isn't bad. And we'll sign a veteran punter, Sam Martin. One year deal. With that, I believe we are ready to take on the preseason in this series and get on to the 2024 campaign. What did you think of the offseason, everybody? Do you think I could have done some things better? How would you have handled this offseason? I'm excited to get the new year underway, and I will do that here very shortly. We'll be on to week one next time against the Miami Dolphins. 
maybe we'll watch that game. Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying the series, and I'll be back again tomorrow with more of the Houston Texans Rebuild franchise. Have a great day, everybody.